Hey guys, it's Scott with Scotty B Cards, and in this video, I want to talk about the junk parallel and the junk set era that we currently might be in. We've heard of the junk wax, we've heard of the junk slab that's been thrown around recently with all the graded cards, but I'm proposing a couple new terms, a junk parallel and a junk set era. And the reason I say that is because parallels and sets are on the rise. Sets as in top series one, all the way to tops fire. There's more of them today than ever in sports card collecting. And on top of that, there are more and more parallels every single year, it feels like when we introduced top series one. And you know, it used to be only the base cards. Now we're up to 24, 23 different parallels in 2021 top series one. And so I wanna discuss all this and how this will impact our hobby. Granted. We're always told to buy the rare cards. Make sure you buy the numbered cards, the low numbered cards, all these things. And that's great in principle, but if every card's special, no cards are special. It's kind of like that saying from The Incredibles. And so I just want to dive into the difference between 2011 and 2021 and look how we're kind of trending in a bad direction and how we can still look for good buys even though there are more than ever. You also probably noticed I don't have a hat on. I couldn't find my Rockies hat. I had it at work. So either I lost it when I went to the gym or somebody stole it when I went to the gym. Either way, I sure feel ball without my Rockies hat. So I'm wearing a Royals hat today only because I'm supporting Billy Butler. I've had this hat since 2014 and I look good at the baby blue. Everything looks nice. Blue eyes. You get the whole picture. All right. So I'm looking at Mike Trout cards first in 2011 and comparing them to Joe Adele cards in 2021. And we'll see a very noticeable difference. First comment I'll make. I know Mike Trout was a later release. Joe Adele was in top series one, but I'll discuss that as we move forward. So first of all, I want to look at each set. He's in seven sets. Mike Trout was. He had eight cards in tops update. Only three of them were numbered down here. These three. This was exclusive to Target. This was exclusive to Walmart and these were in every format. And Bowman Sterling, one of my favorite sets ever. You had everything numbered besides the base. And there's probably only about 500 to a thousand of those base cards in existence because there's only one base card per pack. Bowman Chrome Draft. You had seven cards. Gorgeous parallels. Look at this beautiful rainbow it makes up. You have red, orange, gold, blue, purple, regular refractor, and base. You have Bowman Draft from that same year. It's just three paper cards. You have the base, the gold thick stock, and the blue numbered to 499. You have six cards and regular Bowman Chrome. This is just a refractor of blue, gold, orange, and red. And Finest has the most parallels of any set. You have the base. This is number to 549 refractor, 299 X refractor, 199 green, 99 orange, 50 gold, 25 is the red, out of 10 atomic, and the purple is to five. I excluded all one of ones for 2011 and 2021 just to keep it simple and because I really couldn't find photos of all of those cards. And the last set is E Tops from 2011. One card, no parallels. Every single card is numbered to 999. Really great card in my eyes. If you're looking to buy a Mike Trout rookie, that's relatively affordable, you know, $1,000 to $2,000. I know it's expensive, but only 999 copies in the world. So pretty cool. So total Trout rookie parallels, there's 39. This is what they look like. Everything out there, there's 39 total parallels of Mike Trout rookie cards in existence. So that makes you wonder how many Joe Adele rookie parallels are there? 38. Oh, forgive me. I forgot a one, 318 in 2021. So in 10 years, we went from 39 to 318. Not quite 10 times higher, maybe nine times higher, but that's only in 10 years. And that's what I'm concerned about, that this trend will continue forward. Here's an example of how many cards have his flagship image on them. I made this before all the flagship image releases were set. There's also like 3D, Tops Japan. You also have the mini sets and more that feature this image of Joe Adele. But up to this point between these couple sets, you had 81 cards with this flagship image. I couldn't find all of these parallels from Ben Baller and they weren't released yet. And so for that point, I used Bo Bichette and a couple other players. But the point remains, this many cards has this image of Joe Adele. Mike Trout only has eight <laughs> in one set. Granted, he wasn't in Topps Chrome. There was no Topps Chrome update that existed at the time, but either way, significantly more. So how many sets? 36 total sets. That's just top sets. And that's at least 36 sets. I couldn't find everything, but I did my best. And that's up from seven for Trout. And there's only 23, 24 released in all of 2011 for sets of Topps Baseball that was licensed. And this is just 36 Topps releases. I believe there's going to be quite a bit more of Pinini releases as well. Here's all the different sets and how many different versions of the card, including base cards and excluding one of ones of Joe Adele. Now, Finest was Mike Trout's highest with nine and Joe Adele has 18 in Finest. And then you have Top Series 1, which has 22, while Topps Update in 2011 had eight and so forth. You can just see the crazy increase of how many parallels actually exist in every single 
one of these products. Not only are parallels going up, but sets are going up. And that creates a very unique challenge. And that challenge is obviously is what cards are actually rare? What cards should we target? It's not just buying the numbered cards anymore. You need to buy the right sets and the right numbered cards from the right sets in order to actually have long-term value to those cards. If we look at a majority of players, there's just so much confusion. If we look back 10 years ago, 2011, not that far in the past, not everybody who's in the hobby right now understands all the sets from that year. You know, Mike Trout only has seven sets. He only has two sets with autographs. And on top of that, you don't really hear much about them. What's going to happen with Joe Adele in 10 years? Let's say 2031 rolls around. Joe Adele becomes the next Mike Trout. He probably and most likely is not, but let's say it does happen. Are we going to be so confused? Are any of these cards going to be able to maintain and grow value in comparison to Trout because there's so many of them? Yes, some will. And that's the importance of doing your research about what cards to target. Because <laughs> if you're not targeting the right cards, they're not going to increase as much as you would like. For example, Topps Chrome Sapphire. That is definitely going to increase faster than, let's say, Topps Japan. Topps Chrome Sapphire will also do better than the Topps Complete Set. It'll do better than Topps Fire and Topps Gallery. All these different sets, they do have different places in the hobby. Back in the 1990s, people stopped collecting, not just because print runs were up, but because there were so many different sets to collect, you know, probably 10 to 15, from 10 to 15 different companies, maybe even less than that. But now we have one company that's making licensed baseball cards, but there are at least, <laughs> at least around 59 sets for tops. Here's an image of every Joe Adele rookie parallel. If you wanted to chase the Joe Adele rainbow, Mike Trout had 39, I believe we said, and that's relatively obtainable. If Mike Trout wasn't expensive, let's say I want to go after a rookie like Jose Iglesias, the shortstop that now plays for the Rockies. He's also in a lot of those same sets. I could realistically go for a majority of the cards that aren't one of ones and get all 39 of them. It's not that crazy to think about, but you have a very big road ahead of you just for the licensed tops cards. This isn't including all the Panini sets, 318 of them. Good luck. And that's just the sets I could think of and find. I'm sure there might even be more that aren't in this picture. This picture is just the other one spliced four times. It's actually 320 cards. So I apologize, but that number doesn't include one of ones, even though there's printing plates. That's just because it's just a spliced image. I, could, I didn't want to go look for 318 screenshots. That's about the worst thing in the world. But regardless, it's getting kind of crazy and it's getting higher than ever. If you look at Albert Pujols in 2001 to Mike Trout in 2011, you did have a relatively big increase for parallels. Albert Pujols probably has, you know, 15 to 20 different parallels of all of his cards, including like he has a bat relic in tops traded. Either way, if you look at Mike Trout, he has 39. That's a big increase. But if you go up from 39 to 320, that's when you should get concerned. What about Wander Franco this year? Is he going to have 350 different parallels? Let's just take a look currently at the set increases from 2011. So we now have identified the parallels have increased with the sets. There were 24 in 2011 for tops. Now there's 59. On top of that, there's at least 13 sets for Panini I could find, which is a total of 72 baseball sets, traditional sets. That's not including Onyx or Leaf or anything like that as well. It's just the Tops and Panini sets, 72 sets versus 24 in only 10 years. And I believe that will increase as long as the hobby continues to be popular. New sets continue. This is 2022 Tops Gilded. It was introduced and they have Tops Pristine that's coming back from the mid to early 2000s. I love Tops Pristine, so I'm excited about that. I don't think it'll hold major value because it's a very expensive high-end set, but it's, it's another high-end set. There's so many of them. New parallels will continue as well. Between Series 1, Heritage, and Inception, those are the three sets released so far. There's only been three parallels that have increased. So maybe it shows we're getting to like a very top point, but either way, it's still up three in Heritage, one of the most popular sets in all of baseball card collecting. Those are all Chrome parallels, I believe. So you might be asking yourself, so if I can't buy the base and now you're saying don't buy the parallels, should I even buy cards? The answer is yes, have fun with cards. There's These cards will still have value of the right players. You just need to make sure you're targeting the iconic parallels and the iconic refractors because those are the ones that will appreciate over time in comparison to, let's say some random fuchsia refractor from Topps Chrome. That will not appreciate like a Topps Chrome Gold. Not just because it's numbered to less, it's also because Topps Chrome Gold has been around forever. So make sure you target the right parallels and the right refractors. Target the correct set. Tops Fire is not on the same level as Tops Chrome. Even a one of one from Tops Fire will never rival an out of 25 orange of Tops Chrome if they exist in the same time and they're selling at the same time. That's just how it works. The right parallel, the right set will really increase the value. Target players who appear in fewer sets if you're concerned about this trend. That's like even Juan Soto. He didn't have very many rookies in 2018. Will Smith for the Dodgers. He didn't have very many rookies. Tyler O'Neill has hardly any rookies in 2016. I'm saying buy Tyler O'Neill. That's not what I'm saying at all. It's just target players like him. If you're able to find 
find some really interesting players for really interesting prices with very few sets. DeGrom, Trout, Goldschmidt, Kellenic, all these players have hardly any sets. This is why research is so important. You gotta make sure you're doing the right thing. If you're buying for collecting, enjoy what you buy, buy what you like, and you'll be happy. If you're doing it for investing, make sure you're doing your due diligence. Even in Bowman Chrome, there's all these new Bowman Chrome autograph parallels and refractors. They are not gonna hold the same value as the flagship blue to 150, the gold to 50, the orange to 25, and so forth. Here's some sources if you wanna check these out. This is where I got my information from. But other than that, card collecting's fun. It's supposed to be fun. You gotta be smart about it because we look at it and people look at it as an investment and asset class. And if you're doing that, make sure you're just buying the investment and asset quality cards that are released year in and year out. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think. If you've realized this trend is in existence, if you're shocked by it and what your thoughts are. Other than that, I'll catch you in the next video. See ya.